This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Pretty fun slate across the NFL once again for week number two, beginning with Bills versus Dolphins on Thursday night and continuing all throughout the entire weekend. We're going to break down this week's slate by talking to Dubs Anderson of FanDuel TV, breaking down his thoughts on this week's slate of games, his favorite bets at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor at FanDuel Research, joined here as mentioned by Dubs Anderson. Check him out on X at Mr. Dubsy. Find his work over on FanDuel TV from noon to 2 every Monday through Friday Eastern. Dubs, appreciate the time. How was your week one? It was good, Jim. Uh, pretty profitable on the betting side of things. So let's see if we can carry that momentum into week two. A couple of rookies looking for a bit of a bounce back at quarterback. A couple of big totals that I'm sure you've already got eyes on. So excited. We got another marquee matchup for Thursday night football. So let's get after it. And I think I have the under on every big total. So what could <laughs> possibly go wrong? Rooting against points in the most fun games of the week, right? Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. Sweat towards the unders. There's nothing nothing flashy about it, but if it can make us a couple of dollars, why not? And I do I feel like we're spoiled, Jim, to have so many great matchups yeah. through week one and coming into week two here. A couple of, you know, the Supremos, the heavyweights, if you will, really starting to square off. Yeah, and it's going to start the start off on Thursday night. So we're going to get to that game to kick things off. Get Dub's thoughts on Bills versus Dolphins, then dive into Bucks and Lions, a playoff rematch there, and of course a banger to close things off. Bengals versus Chiefs, along with Dub's best bets of the week. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. We had Liv Moods on Tuesday, breaking on her thoughts in the futures market, some early looks at week one, week two with her as well. Ken Padgett, join us. To break down uh, college football week number three as well. Both those shows already up on the Cover in the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. Check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page as well and over on FanDuel TV+. Plus. Football is back and there's no better place to get in on the NFL action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book because right now all customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. Plus, with FanDuel, you don't even have to leave the app to access real-time stats and data to help you make even more winning bets. Download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Must be 21-plus and present in select states or 18-plus and present in D.C. Offer ends 9-22-24. After a three-week free trial, full price of NFL Sunday tickets will be automatically charged seasonally. No refunds. Cancel any time. Terms, restrictions, and embargoes apply. YouTube TV base plan required to watch YouTube TV. Reject Redemption requires a Google account and current form of payment. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. Call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash Chad Connecticut. Visit MD Gambling Health at Oregon, Maryland. Hope is here for the gambling helpline MA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope Y in New York. Now, Dubs, the key to week two is making sure that we are reacting properly to week one without overreacting. And that's a tough balance to do. So what do you do yourself to ensure your week two thoughts aren't overly influenced by a one week sample in week one? Yeah, it's like doing anything for the first time. You've got to approach week two with a little caution. You know, uh, what we saw in week one, a couple of upsets, a couple of rookies trying to find their way in the pros here. So not taking too much away from that. I'm more looking towards target share. Can we work out who's going to be the number one wide receivers? How's the backfield going to look? Is it going to be a bell cow kind of approach? Maybe it's a running back by committee. So I like to factor those things in. In terms of the rookie QBs, like to take a glance at them. I try to stay away from them in week one, but just trying to see a measure of who could take that forward step into week two. So approach with caution. That would be the common theme for me going uh, into week two of the NFL here. But look, I think there's a couple of great matchups on the betting side of things. We're starting to see a couple of lines where the odds makers really can't figure out which way to go. And for us, Jim, I think that presents a bit of value. Yeah, they're just as confused as we are. Uh, we're working off the same information here. So it's important to keep that in mind is, yeah, we might not know how to handle these certain situations, but 
bookmakers might not either. So it's important to keep that in mind that we all have the same info to work with and hopefully we can apply it properly. And let's try to apply it properly to the first game of the week here, Dubs. That is the Bills at the Dolphins right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Dolphins here by two and a half. Total is 48 and a half in this game. No Raheem Mostert for the Dolphins. Bills missing some key defensive pieces here. Teron Johnson not going to play. But the offense, I thought, looked pretty good in week one. So can the Bills pull off the slight upset here down in Miami? You know, history says yes. History tells us that Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills have had the measure going against the Dolphins. But look, I'm going to be playing against here. I I thought uh, in terms of what we saw from the offenses in week one, it was Josh Allen. He carried the Bills to the promised land. Two passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns. I don't know how long you can do that going through a long and vigorous season in the NFL. What do we see from the Dolphins? They were okay without being fantastic. But the Miami Dolphins, they are the Ferrari kind of offense, if you will. And with a Ferrari, Jim, you don't want to have it on two wheels going out the dealership. You want to get it down to the 405, and then you put the pedal down. I think we get that for Thursday night. They faced a bit of adversity. Obviously, didn't slow down the cheetah too much. But offensive firepower across the board here. And I guess a key takeaway for me from week one was the defense for the Bills, they gave up a lot of points. That secondary looked a little spotty going against the Arizona Cardinals. Well, let's step things up. You're taking on the Miami Dolphins in their ballpark in week two. I think weather could absolutely be a factor. Down there in South Beach, it looks like it's going to be a very hot Thursday afternoon for the Bills. Maybe they're trying to play a little catch-up on the fitness side of things. I think Miami take a forward step. We've seen this number, one and a half, two and a half. It's hovering there at the book. I do think the Dolphins can get the score in this one with that offense just taking a further step forward. So I'm going to take the home favorites to cover for Thursday night football. Playing against the Bills, I feel like uh, it's not the trendy pick, but for me, I love what I'm seeing from Miami. All right, that is the Dolphins minus two and a half at FanDuel Sportsbook right now. Laying the two and a half is minus 115 there. And the Dolphins offense had its issues at times in week one. You know, they weren't consistent, but they busted out the big plays. I think that's kind of what's reassuring about them, Dubs, is that even when they may not have the down-to-down success, they can still punch you in the mouth with that that firepower. So they have outs if the offense isn't consistent to still make some big games. And like you said, the Bills let up 28 at home, despite the fact that they were, that the, the Cardinals and indoor team were playing in 20 mile per hour wins. I, I agree that that was a bit of a concern there for that, that, that Bills defense specifically. Yeah. And the Dolphins can set, you know, the run game. Most it's not going to be go for this one. A chan is apparently going to be uh, a game time decision, but you've still got Jeff Wilson to cut the rock up after that. So if they can't get it done downfield, they can hit you with, that run attack, if they get off to a strong start, what can Josh Allen really do? We saw a lot of mouths getting fed there in week one. It's probably going to be a similar game plan coming in for Buffalo here for week two. But I do think they'll be playing catch up. Josh Allen, again, is just going to have to find a way to will this team across the finish line. He comes in with you know a couple of concerns there. That left hand got a little banged up, but I don't think it's going to slow him down. So maybe you can look towards him for another anytime touchdown score. You got two rushing into the house there last week. They're going to have to put up Points. I know it's a high total for this one. Still not afraid of the overs. Tyreek Hill's obviously going to be another trendy pick, but I mean, nah, don't sleep on Jalen Waddle. 63 and a half receiving yards, 64, three catches. He's probably going to send it north of that number there as well. So obviously, Jim, I'm very big on the Miami Dolphins. I give them a B plus in week one, maybe a, a solid B. I sure. think we see improvement here for week two. Yeah, that Jags defense could be pretty good this year. So I don't want to hold that too much against them uh, that they only put up 20 in that game. Second game I want to talk about here with you, Dubs, is the Buccaneers at the Lions right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Lions favored by seven points. Uh, The total is 51 and a half. another large total for this one playoff rematch of the NFC divisional round last year. Can the Bucs duplicate their week one success and keep this one close? Or is it Detroit once again? I thought you were going to ask me, is Baker Mayfield the best quarterback in the NFL? And I, I would say yes. So to, to answer your first question, I think the Bucs have got a really good chance here taking the points. Can they win this one straight up? I, I don't think so. I think the Lions are going to edge them out. But I think this one could actually turn out to be a rock fight, a bit of a dog fight. We're seeing that hefty total. For me, this feels like an under spot. I do think it gets a, a little slower as we get into that second half. For Baker Mayfield, you know, I joke about this guy being the biggest dog in the NFL, but He's playing with such confidence, Jim. You know, I thought maybe it would take him a stride to really get things going with the offense here for Tampa Bay. They look so polished in week one. It looks like he's playing with house money. It looks like he's been 
in the gym. He's got plenty of, of weapons to work with. Mike Evans had a couple of nice catches there. You've got Chris Godwin. It looked like they got that run attack going as well, trying to set the table. So I think this is a big spot, not to take anything away from the Detroit Lions in week one. I thought that was a fantastic game going against the Rams there. But uh, on a fast track, I think the Bucs can absolutely run with them in this spot. But I just think that total is getting a little high for mine. We may be a little surprised that it's not yeah, uh, you know the, the points, the points spread that we're expecting, but I do think the Bucks can uh, absolutely give them a tilt here. All right, so that total right now, fifty-one and a half over at FanDuel Sportsbook for the Bucks taking on the Lions. Under is minus one fifteen. If you want to take the seven with Detroit with Tampa Bay, you're laying minus one ten on that. And I actually agree with you on both those dubs, where I think that you could take the points of the Buccaneers. Didn't see value early in the week when it's six and a half. Once you get the seven, you get the push on a, a touchdown spread. That to me was enough to pull the trigger there. I also did take the under. I've got this at forty-eight point two, and honestly. That's a pretty high total for my model, and I'm still showing value on the under. Uh, same thing with the Rams and the Lions last week. So if I can have what, based on my numbers, is a very high total and still see value towards the under, I'm going to take that pretty much every time because we can see two efficient offenses like you're going to be saw versus, in Lions versus Rams. They moved the ball very well in that game, but it still went under, especially with how run-heavy the Lions want to be at times. I think there is a good amount of value towards the under in this game. Yeah, and, and for betters who love trying to build, you know, the same game parlays, I think you could correlate the bet types there. If you think the Bucks are going to cover the number, I would be looking towards correlating that with the unders there. If you think it's going to be a blowout, Detroit to cover that spot and send it well over the overs. But uh, I do think we get the unders in this spot. I love what I'm seeing from the Bucks, Baker Mayfield, Bucky Irving, getting that run game going. So this is going to be another fantastic matchup for Week 2. Yeah, the SGP of the Bucks plus seven and the under 51 and a half, which, as you said, do correlate plus 221 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook on that one. OK, so Dubs and I both on the Bucks plus seven and the under 51 and a half for the Lions taking on the Buccaneers. Final game we want to discuss in depth here is a bit of a banger, Dubs. It is a a kind of a rivalry at this point between the Chiefs and the Bengals right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Chiefs are favored by five and a half. Total is 47 and a half down a point from where it was yesterday. Yesterday, the Bengals didn't look good in week one. They fell the Patriots straight up. Can they bounce back and cover against the Chiefs on the road? Or is it another Chiefs victory here in week number two? Yeah, it, look, look, it's interesting for me, Jim. You know, when these lines dropped, I'm looking at it saying, I love the Bengals here. You know, Joey Burrow, three and one going against the Kansas City Chiefs. He has had their measure. And it's Joe Burrow. He's back. He's healthy. How can they not get this offense moving in the right direction. But I do think it was a little concerning from what we saw in week one. You know, T Higgins is going to be unlikely to suit up here for week number two. Jamar Chase, he was far from fantastic. We get in the mail that, you know, maybe it was the old food poisoning and uh, the, the, the Domino's ham and pineapple just didn't sit <laughs> well there in the tum-tum. But look, he's obviously looking to get that bag. Uh, for Joe Burrow, not to take a knock against him, but that offense just lacked a lot of chemistry, a lot of cohesion. And suddenly you're going against the champs in their building. Everything wanted me to say Joe Burrow is going to find a way in this spot, but I cannot support the number. I think the Kansas City Chiefs may even take a forward step. You know, they're obviously going to come into this one well rested after getting their season underway back on Thursday night there for week one. So I'm going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs to cover this spot. Patrick Mahomes, the best quarterback in the business, now working with added toys in another week under the belt trying to get more reps in i think uh, it's all about kansas city chiefs in this spot for me and look if the Bengals go zero and two to start things are not looking so good up there in cincy yeah i'm very receptive to eventually buying low on the Bengals, but this is not the spot to me because i agree with you that the chiefs might still be a bit undervalued here i i thought i thought same thing as you where it's like okay People will overreact to the Bengals and their loss in week one. It's a one game sample. Don't want to overreact to that. So I thought, okay, probably going to show value on the Bengals. Then I pulled up my numbers and saw that I've got the Chiefs favored by 6.7 in this game. So that does imply some value in them at minus five and a half. And I've not taken that uh, because I'm a bit hesitant, um, you know, want to pick my spots effectively early on in the year. But like, it's kind of swinging the other way where I showed value on the Chiefs. And that did surprise me. So I'm on board with you where I think that if you're taking a side here, it should be the Chiefs minus five and a half. And if you want to buy low on the Bengals, wait for a better situation to do so. And maybe we maybe we don't want to getting that, but I think that this now is not the right time to do so. Yeah, and we know there's going to be plenty of offense. So if you're big on the Bengals, if you're big on Joe Burrow, like myself, maybe look towards his passing prop at 226 sure. 
in a half. If they are behind from the jump, he is going to have to air it out. He's still one of the best quarterbacks in the business. Who's he going to be getting a downfield to? Well, question marks on that side of things. But at 226 and a half, that's not the highest of numbers there for Joey Burrow. So that's the way I'd look to play the, uh, the Bengals and their star quarterback. All right, so in the key games this week, we are liking the Chiefs minus five and a half, the Bucks and Lions under 51 and a half with the Bucks plus seven in there as well. And then the Dolphins minus two and a half on Thursday night football. Any other week two bets that stand out to you right now, Dubs? Yeah, look, I, I've got uh, a bit of a five pack here that I'll rattle through pretty quickly. I like the, the Vikings taking the points against the 49ers. Sam Darnold going against his old ball club. I think they can keep it sneaky close. They're not going to get the win straight up, but I do think that's a fair few points for the 49ers. Maybe get uh, get caught in a bit of a trap spot, if you will. The Chargers, I think they're going to beat the absolute breaks off the Panthers. <laughs> that was the most underwhelming performance in week one. I mean, quarterback whisperer turn head coach. I, I'd be shouting in that locker room trying to get a response out of Carolina, but it's not going to happen going against a pretty gritty Chargers side from what we did see. I think the Jags, they uh, they get into the winner's circle going against the Browns. This one's in Jacksonville. We've seen that number hover right around a field goal there. I think for Trevor Lawrence and the Jags, weren't fantastic in week one. I think they'll try and find stride for this one and for the Browns and Deshaun Watson. I mean, certainly not going to welcome the, uh, the media buzz going towards uh, you know what they're dealing with. It just hasn't been a fantastic start to their campaign. Rams-Cardinals, a very exciting matchup here, 48 and a half, another high total, but I do think we see a track meet in that one. Kyler Murray, Matty Stafford, they're going to be going back and forth, and we see plenty of tutties, so give me the overs. And then the Broncos, in their home opener, I thought they'd be getting set to welcome in Danger Russ, Russell Wilson, <laughs> quarterback for the Steelers. Not meant to be. It looks like it's going to be Justin Fields, but... I like the Broncos in uh, a little get-right spot. Out of all the rookie quarterbacks, I think Bo Nix will, uh, will will try and find a bit of that run game early, ease the shoulders there, find his way into this matchup, and I think the Steelers will give him every chance to do so. Just got to watch out for Big Bad Watt coming at him. Yeah, those numbers Dubs mentioned. Uh, the Broncos, plus 2.5, minus 110. Rams, Cardinals, over 49.5. Jags, minus 3.5. Chargers, minus 6.5. Vikings, plus 6.5. And, and Dubs, I've placed a lot of gross bets in my life. <laughs> I got to say that over 36 and a half for Steelers Broncos is high on that list, but I did do that today. Um, <laughs> you sicko. You sicko, Jim, but I yeah. absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> taking unders on fun games, taking overs on the absolute worst games you could possibly imagine. Defensive touchdowns count, man. They yeah, count they towards don't. overs too. So it may not feel great, but we're going to be here anyway. So I think that that should set up for a, Hopefully uh, a more fun game than you might think on paper. That is Dubs Anderson. Make sure you check him out on X at Mr. Dubs. You can find him on FanDuel TV, noon to 2 Eastern, Monday through Friday with Megan Payton, who will join us later on this week, talk some player props as well. But Dubs, appreciate the time as always. Good luck to you in week two. We'll talk to you once again next week. Good luck all with those wages for week two, Jim. Always a pleasure. Thank you, mate. Alrighty, and find Dubs on X at Mr. Dubsy. I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. Again, college football week three is already up, and uh, our talk with Liv Moods up as well. Megan Payton coming up for you on Friday, all right here in the Covering the Spread podcast feed at FanDuel TV Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. We'll talk to you all once again tomorrow. This has been Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. 